Hampden Park stands proudly in Mount Florida. It is Scotland's national stadium and, as Richard McBrearty, the curator of the Scottish Football Museum, puts it, the grand old lady of world football. Hampden Park's not only important within the history of Scottish football, I think as a place within European and world football. Uh, and the museum documents that. It, it tells you the history of Hampden from 1903 when it was first uh, created here in the south side of Glasgow. And of course this is the third stadium to be called Hampden. There are actually two other sites not far away from where we are just now, um, going back to 1873 as well. But certainly Hampden is, is such an important part of Scottish football that it's well um, documented within the museum and, and there's certainly plenty of displays showing that. The museum contains hundreds of fascinating exhibits. The only remaining ticket for the world's first international match. The Scottish Cup, the oldest football trophy in the world. Hamden's old turnstiles and a mock-up of the stadium's old dressing room. In fact, the whole museum is a treasure trove of Scotland's footballing past. Well, we're now in the, the uh, Scottish FA International Rule of Honour. Um, when you play for Scotland, you're given a cap, you're officially your cap for your country. The first time that actually happens uh, within Scottish football is way back in 1882, when the first caps were presented to the Scotland international team for a match v England. And that tradition's carried on ever since. And we're actually at the International Rule of Honour. And that's for Scotland international players who win 50 caps or more playing for the country. And you'll see some of the names uh, on the board here, some of the, I think, the greats of Scottish football. Uh, Graeme Souness, Danny McGrain, Kenny Dalglish. Um, and there's, there's many here so far, and I'm sure there'll be a few more getting into the future. Now, just five minutes from here, uh, this year I used to play host to um, Third Lanark, who are very popular, the high highs of are called, and the park, the Cathkin Park, is still over there, but it's quite a sad story, isn't it? Three sides of the stadium still exist, but there's trees growing through the terracing and hedges and, and leaves all over the place, but the, the terracing's still there. Uh, the bar, the crush barriers are still there as well. It's only the, 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 the run along one side of, of the pitch where the, the old stand used to be, that's now gone for health and safety reasons that it was demolished many years ago. In that particular year, 1967, so much was happening in Scottish football that was you know that was very important. Scotland was, was winning at Wembley, uh, beating the, the world champions England at Wembley Stadium 3-2. Celtic were lifting the European Cup that year as well. Rangers were contesting a major final, the, the, the um, Cup Winners Cup final as well that same year. So there's a, a lot of positives in Scottish football. And yet, amongst all of that happening, you've got the sad story of a really famous old team, Third Lanark Football Club, going out of business. Third Lanark may have been one of Scottish football's casualties, but the game as we know it today was its existence to Queen's Park. Queen's Park brings football to Scotland, uh, the modern game it actually creates the modern game in many respects because it takes a very rudimentary game and changes it uh, almost beyond recognition from an individualistic style of game which wasn't particularly nice to watch. Queen's Park really creates the passing game, the team-based game, the, as Pelly calls it, the beautiful game. And I think that's the tribute that we have to pay to Queen's Park.